feet on the street and working with clients day in, day out, this was the biggest objection, one of the biggest objections to open source. Hey, you know, I cobble it together, you know, something new Hibernate version comes out, I put it in and it breaks the whole thing. Operations people are going nuts. So, you know, this is a great thing that you guys are doing. Good, good. What about um, when you mention uh, SOA governance, what do you think some of the important components of governance are? Uh, again, sort of maybe feeding the community here to give them some ideas. Uh, you know, how would you define it and what things do you think need to be tackled? Right. Well, you know, from a software perspective, the runtime governance is, uh, is important. So metadata repositories, which mm -hmm. is a registry metadata repository combination. Um, you know, and the other, the other part is auditing and monitoring of, of, of that SOA runtime stack, mm -hmm. right? So being able to turn off services, being able to look at the usages of services, so not only like discovering of the service, because I don't see any of, of our clients you know, wanting to discover services in runtime. What they want to do is they want to put strict governance around this so the services don't blow up as in, if somebody you know, in a large corporation starts putting 100,000 users on it. They want to understand the matrix around the usages because the C-level folks are interested in kind of the reuse factor of, of the platform. Mm -hmm. so, and they're saying, well, I want to run 40% of my business through your ESB platform. Are we, you know, kind of, are we doing it or not? So matrix around that and you know, really getting uh, you know, tighter control at deployment time, you know, is, is versions of the service and so forth and so on. Do you think SLAs are very important? I mean, do people sort of say, well, we have this service, we're going to have 100,000 people hitting this service and we're going to establish SLAs based on some, some policy associated with these users or? Um, I agree. I mean, SLAs are very important, right? Because uh, number two complaint is like, the services are going to be very slow, right? Yeah. So, yeah, being able to track SLAs, again, you know, rolling it up to the management, C-level management level, and giving them the ability to see, hey, you know, this stuff is running, and, you know, giving a certain view to the operations people, because these are the guys who are important after you go to production, you know, so they, you know, they get kind of buzzed at 2 o'clock in, uh, in the morning with all these issues. So, yeah, SLA and kind of event notification from if we're not meeting SLAs, because, again, down the line, a lot of the clients will be running their mission critical stuff on the SOA platform through services and you know, we just have to get all of these aspects in line and if we can do it through the governance tooling that'd be great also. What about, uh, maybe give an example, um, I don't know to the extent that you can cite a customer example um, that has been an interesting SOA project for, with some of the JBoss uh, componentry. Um. <laughs> we get a little plug in. Yeah, a, a lot of the projects that we've done in the last uh, three to four years have involved a lot of JBoss components. Um, I'll be speaking later on uh, about a Dun & Bradstreet uh, uh, case where we are two years into a five-year plan to migrate enterprise into uh, an enterprise-level service-oriented architecture implementation. So they have very bold goals around, you know, 90% of their products and data running through this platform. Uh, here we used uh, an extensive Red Hat JBoss stack, uh, you know, GFS instead of Veritas, let's say, and JBoss application server integrated with service mix in this case. But again, the, pro, the platform, you know, we spent about six months just building out the platform. Is, the platform is rock solid. We're leveraging John for the operations folks. And there is, this, you know, probably up to 20 services are right now and events are running through, through this platform. And really, here's a case where the, the client has made a commitment to re-engineer the enterprise in the service-oriented manner. And that commitment didn't come overnight. I mean, we had some battles to kind of, you know, but again, this was a, a result of this agile and iterative type of implementation where we showed the value within the first six months and then the business didn't have any reservations. So we'll, I think 420, myself and Kevin Zachman, who's the uh, head of global enterprise architecture, will be speaking about that test case. We call it practical SOA. So based on that experience, um, you know, if you were to give, you, we started the conversation in terms of some guidance for entering into SOA. Um, you know, what would you, you know, do you think it's mostly, when, you, when you're doing your consulting engagements, is it, is it, a, is it mostly a, a management thing because they don't have their arms around what the business is or is it a technology issue? I mean, what, what percentage of your time are you sort of dealing with the, the management issue and what, you know, defining what they're doing versus, okay, implementation and technology? I would say it's split. I mean, at this point, I, you know, there is not a lot of, push from the business to get service. I mean, businesses are always narrowly focused on sales. I mean, they might be at the very high level, like board level. Um, but it, it needs both. There are so many aspects of it. Uh, you know, you have to kind of nurse the technology side of this. So the, 